Resting heart rate and heart rate variability provide information about the integration between the nervous system and adrenal gland with the heart. And we can see that here. So sympathetic nerve activity and parasympathetic nerve activity, more specifically the vagus nerve, in addition to sympathetic nerve activity induced adrenal gland release of norepinephrine and epinephrine impact resting heart rate and heart rate variability. So with that in mind, what's optimal for resting heart rate and heart rate variability? More specifically, how do resting heart rate and heart rate variability change during aging? Also in this video, we'll take a look at my data as I now have more than 1600 days for both of these metrics and also what's contributing to improvements for resting heart rate and heart rate variability. So first, how does the resting heart rate change during aging? And we can see that here. So we're looking at the average resting heart rate on the y-axis plotted against age on the x. And in this case, the age range is from 20 to 50 years. And this is WHOOP's data as I've been wearing WHOOP since 2018. So for both women in red and men in blue, we can see that the resting heart rate increases for both men and women up to 50 years. Now, what about older than 50 years? So we can see that data here, and this is in a published study of more than 90,000 Fitbit users. Once again, we've got average resting heart rate on the y-axis plotted against age on the x. And in agreement with WHOOP's data, we can again see an age-related increase for resting heart rate up to 50 years. But then we can see that the resting heart rate declines up, into 80, up, up until 85 years. So we can then also see that relatively low resting heart rates are found in both young and people that are of advanced age. So how would we know if a relatively low resting heart rate was indicative of youth or aging? And that's where heart rate variability comes in as that provides more context. So what is HRV? So the definition of HRV is it's the variability for the time in between heartbeats. So what does that mean? Well, for a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, the assumption is that the heart beats exactly once per second, but that's not necessarily true. Here we can see the time in between three consecutive heartbeats, and you can see that the times are not all the same, 859, 793, and 726 milliseconds uh, in between each heartbeat. And the variability in that data is then calculated as heart rate variability. And more specifically, WHOOP uses the RMSSD, root mean squared of successive differences. So because that's what they report, that's the data that I'm going to present going forward in this video. So with that in mind, how does heart rate variability, or more specifically, the RMSSD, change during aging? And we can see that data here. This is in a study of more than 8.2 million people, and these are our Fitbit users. So first, uh, and then I should mention too, we've got the RMSSD as the HRV metric on the y-axis plotted against age and the age range going from 20 to 60 years. And then we've got two different curves on this graph. We've got solid lines and dashed lines. The solid lines are when HRV was recorded at 6 in the morning and the dashed lines were when it was recorded at 6 at night. So at, uh, for both of these time points, we can see that the highest heart rate variability values are found at 6 in the morning when compared with 6 at night. Now, WHOOP provides HRV data first thing in the morning as the average during sleep. So that's the data I'm going to focus on, the six in, six in the morning curves. And what we can see is that HRV declines during aging for both men and women. Now, to, we, now we can go back to our question of, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? So in youth, resting heart rate is relatively low and heart rate variability is relatively high. Conversely, in advanced age, there, there can also be low resting heart rates, but also low heart rate variability. Now, I've tracked both of these metrics, resting heart rate and heart rate variability, since August of 2018. And as I mentioned, it's more than 1,600 days of data. So what's my data? Now, based on popu these population-based averages up to 50 years old, my chronological, or my pretty much close to my chronological age, I'm going to turn 50 next week, uh, we can expect to see that my resting heart rate has increased but my heart rate variability has decreased. So is that true? Let's take a look. So first we're gonna take, uh, take a look at my average yearly resting heart rate in beats per minute. And this is from August 5th of 2018 through January 14th of 2023. And again, this is 1,618 days of data. And we can see that, we can see that here. So when I first started tracking in 2018, my year, full year, well, not full year, but my partial year average starting in August of 2018, uh, average for resting heart rate was 50.9 beats per minute, so about 51 beats per minute. And then in 2019, I reduced that to uh, a yearly average, full year average for resting heart rate of 48.9 beats per minute. Now, rather than just looking at uh, 
averages, yearly averages, year to year, we can compare these two groups of data with a two sample t-test. And when I do that, we can see that I, was, uh, I significantly reduced uh, my resting heart rate in 2019, 48.9, from 50.9, as that p-value is less than 0.05. In 2020, similarly, I reduced the resting heart rate to 48.1 beats per minute. And again, that's the full year average. Each dot on this plot is one day's worth of data. And when using a two sample t-test, this too was better than the 2018 value of about 51 beats per minute. Now we can also look at year over year changes in addition to comparing 2020 versus 2018. What about 2020 versus 2019? And when doing that, we can see that I was able to significantly reduce the resting heart rate from 48.9 in 2019 to 48.1. In 2021, I further reduced my resting heart rate to 47.4 for the full year average, which was significantly lower than where I started in 2018 and also significantly lower when compared with 2020. In 2022, I also reduced my resting heart rate to 45 beats per minute. And again, this is a full year average, which was significantly lower than where I started in 2018 and also significantly lower when compared with 2021. Thus far, over the first 14 days in 2023, my average resting heart rate is 44 and a half beats per minute, which is significantly lower than where I started in 2018, but just outside of significance when compared with 2022. So from these data, we can see that I've consistently reduced my resting heart rate from 2018 to 2023. That's a typo. It should say 2023. So is that good or bad? Now, if you remember our question from earlier, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? We can see that a relatively low resting heart rate is found in youth, but also in advanced age. So one thing for sure is that I've definitely resisted the age-related increase for resting heart rate as based on this plot, we can expect, we could, we could have expected to see my resting heart rate increase up, up until about 50 years. But then also notice that it's possible that because I've reduced resting heart rate over the past four plus years, I may be experiencing the age-related decline for resting heart rate. So how can we assess that? So for more context, let's have a look at heart rate variability data since 2018. And that's what we're going to look at here over that same time period, more than 1,600 days of data. So when I first started tracking heart rate variability, it was 47.3 milliseconds in 2018. In 2019, I increased that to 56.2, and again, using a two-sample t-test to, to compare these two groups of data. And again, each dot refers to a single day's worth of data. Um, so when using a two-sample t-test, I was able to significantly increase heart rate variability in 2019 when compared with 2018. As you can see that the p-value is significantly lower, or it's lower than uh, 0 0.05. In 2020, I also was able to keep my heart rate variability relatively high at 57.8 milliseconds, which was significantly better than where I started in 2018, but just outside of statistical significance when compared with 2019. So in other words, 2019 data is not different from 2020 data. 56.2 is not significantly different uh, with 57.8, just outside significance with a p-value of 0 0.07. But then in 2021, I had a regression. Uh, heart rate variability went down to 51.9 milliseconds, which although it was better than where I started in 2018, was significantly worse when compared with 2020. And note that a lower heart rate variability would be going in the wrong direction as heart rate variability declines during aging. So in 2022, a major focus was to reverse that trend and to get my heart rate variability back up to where it was in 2019 and 2020 or better. So for 2022, my average heart rate, heart rate variability was 59.3 milliseconds which was a significant improvement when compared with 2018 and also a significantly increase when compared with 2021. So I successfully re reversed that trend uh, that, it, that I experienced in 2021. And thus far in 2023, my average heart rate variability over the first 14 days is 62.4 milliseconds, which again is significantly better than where I started in 2018, but just outside of significance when compared with 2022. So 59.3 in 2022 is about the same as or is similar to my current uh, average in 2023 of 62.4 milliseconds. So for heart rate variability, we can see that I've cons consistently increased, or not consistently increased it with that uh, dip in 2021, but I've increased it from 2018 to 2022 with a small amount of data in 2023, too little data yet to make any definitive conclusions. So how do these data compare with age-related changes for heart rate variability? So for that, we go back to this plot of 8.2 million people. Now, for what's expected based on my chronological age of almost 50 
is a median heart rate variability of 35.1 milliseconds as illustrated by that red arrow there. So at worst, 59 to 62 milliseconds, my current range for heart rate variability is above the heart rate variability range for my chronological age. So that's at worst, that's seemingly good news though. But at best, 50 to, 59 to 62 milliseconds for heart rate variability is the median value for someone about 22 years younger. So it's potentially indicative of a youthful heart. So, uh, and to go back to our question of, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? Now we can answer that question because we have the data for heart rate variability put into context. So in my case, a relatively high heart rate variability plus, plus low resting heart rate suggests, as I mentioned, cardiovascular, cardiovascular youth, sorry. In contrast, based on my chronological age, a lower heart rate variability plus a higher resting heart rate, 35 for HRV, about 57 based on WHOOPS uh, data, uh, would be expected based on chronological age. All right, so what's contributing to these improvements for resting heart rate and heart rate variability over the past four plus years? So first, what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate? So here we're looking at my average monthly body weight and note that I weigh myself every morning. Uh, this is after number one and two, and that's fasted. And each dot in this case is the monthly average. So around 30 days of data for each month in one dot. And then on the right, we've got the average monthly heart rate too over that same time period. So from August, 2018 to January of 2023, or at least half the month of January, 2023. And we can see that these two graphs look somewhat similar. As body weight has de decreased as in indicated by the green arrows, correspondingly, resting heart rate has also decreased during those periods. And conversely, during periods where body weight has increased, resting heart rate has also increased as shown by the red arrows. Now, aside from just looking at two separate plots, we can look at the uh, correlation between these two metrics, body weight and resting heart rate. So is body weight significantly correlated with resting heart rate? And that's what we can see here. So in this case, now we're looking at daily resting heart rate versus body weight over those 1600 day plus period. So in this case, each dot is a single day's worth of data. And what we can see is a significant positive correlation. Uh, in other words, as body weight has increased, that's significantly correlated with a higher resting heart rate. Conversely, as body weight approaches 149 pounds on the left side of this graph or of this plot, resting heart rate approaches 45 beats per minute. But what about less than 149 pounds? As you can see, I don't yet have data uh, lighter than 149 pounds. So a major goal of 2023 is to slowly reduce my body weight and collect that data and see if, if this trend leads to even further reductions for resting heart rate. All right, what about for heart rate variability? What's the relationship for body weight with rest, uh, heart rate variability? And that's what we can see here. So again, we've got the average monthly body weight on the left. Now we've got average monthly heart rate variability over the same time period on the right. And now the two graphs don't look, uh, to, they, they don't seem to overlap. They don't look as obvious as the resting heart rate trend. But nonetheless, there are some trends here still. So during periods where body weight uh, had decreased, heart rate variability increased. And conversely, during a time when body weight increased, heart rate variability decreased. Now, besides, besides just looking at two graphs, we can then look more specifically to see if body weight is significantly correlated with heart rate variability. And that's what we've got here. This is the daily heart rate variability versus body weight over that same 1600 day plus time span. And again, in this case, each dot is a single day's worth of data. So now we can see a significant negative or inverse correlation. In other words, as body weight increases, that's significantly correlated with a lower heart rate variability. And conversely, as my body weight has approached lighter values, uh, in this case, 149 pounds would be my lightest during this time span, heart rate variability has approached 60 milliseconds. And just like for resting heart rate, I don't yet have data over, over that four year time span uh, being lighter than 149 pounds. So a major goal of 2023, again, is to get a bit leaner and see how that impacts not just resting heart rate, but heart rate variability. So to answer the question, what's the relationship for body weight with heart rate variability and resting heart rate? Both of these metrics approach youthful values as body weight decreases, at least in my case. Now, physical activity also obviously impacts both resting heart rate and heart rate variability. So let's take a look at that data. So here, 
with the using the average daily heart heart rate as a metric of daily physical activity let's take a look at its potential impact on heart rate variability and resting heart rate now as i mentioned the adhr is an index of daily physical activity whole day physical activity but also it can be indicative of stress too and i've had the unfortunate experience of not having a workout but having a day with an average heart rate as high as a workout day just from you know work stress or emotional stress and i try to minimize those days as much as i can but sometimes they're just unavoidable so a higher average daily heart rate equals more physical activity plus more overall stress so what's the correlation for the adhr with next day resting heart rate and that's what we can see here now i don't have 1600 plus days of data for this as i didn't have the idea unfortunately to track this from 2018 it took me about 600 days to realize that this was this was an important metric and to start tracking it so i have about a thousand days of data for the average daily heart rate and we're going to look at its correlation with resting heart rate and heart rate variability and what we can see here is that there's a significant positive correlation in other words the higher the average daily heart rate the worse or the higher that the next day resting heart rate would be which means that too much daily activity and too often is bad for resting heart rate at least in my case what about the this correlation with heart rate variability and that's what we can see here again over that same time span about a thousand days of data now we can see a significant negative or inverse correlation which suggests again that too much daily activity too often will be bad for heart rate variability in other words the higher the average daily heart rate the worse my next morning heart rate variability so finding the balance between active and rest days is important for optimizing resting heart rate and heart rate variability so what does that look like it's easy to say but what does that look like and i mentioned this in my last video in this series but just to show it again to reiterate so this is a screenshot of the one week period for my average daily heart rate and the active days are the ones that have heart rates of 59 beats per minute so that includes my usual workout which is an 80 minute full body workout so starting with the first 59 then you can see that there are three relatively lower overall activity days 53 i think 55 and 54 beats per minute and those are intentional i purposefully titrate overall activity down or titrated overall activity down over those three days before having my next workout thereby allowing resting heart rate and heart rate variability to more fully recover and then the next 59 was uh so that was four days after the the first workout but I also follow a three-day uh, workout uh, approach. So that was a 59 there. And then I titrated activity down for the next two days. And then I had the next workout on, on, uh, on day three. So uh, it's a three-day, four-day approach, basically two workouts a week, 80 minutes per session with usually light walking on the lower activity days. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch to that you may be interested in, and if you're interested in that, uh, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.